You are listening to the Bitter Medicine Podcast on KWAZ Radio. Welcome to the Bitter Medicine Podcast, where it's all about black empowerment. Our show focuses on black news and entertainment, arts, science, economics, history, people, and strategies that uplift, empower, and motivate Africans within the diaspora. And now, your host, whose favorite color is black, Goku. Greetings, everyone. Welcome back to the Bitter Medicine Podcast. I am your host, Koku, here today with a new paper. I actually ran into this paper while doing some research on something else. And I thought it might be an interesting paper to kind of talk about uh, the philosophy of African medical practice. Uh, before I get into the paper, just want to remind you quickly that this show is a part of a podcast network. There are other shows on the network you guys should be tuning into. This is DA asking you to tune into the Harsh Reality Podcast, providing you with social commentary on the news affecting our community, only on KWAZ Radio. Peace, family. This is Oni, inviting you to listen to the pro-black perspective, where black problems are addressed with black solutions. You are listening to the Bitter Medicine Podcast on KWAZ Radio. Yes, indeed. Make sure to check out all the shows on KWAZ Radio as well as follow KWAZ Radio's YouTube channel. Make sure to subscribe, click the bell to be notified when there's new content posted there. And do the same for all the shows, including mine's, the show that you're listening to right now. I appreciate anyone who's listening live with me today. I appreciate the likes. Make sure if you're here, click the like button. Even if you don't let us know that you're actually here and you're listening in silence, click the like button. Those likes actually help this small channel grow. All right, appreciate you guys. Uh, If you're not on the Discord, uh, make sure you guys join the Discord too. Uh, You could look for the link in the description of this episode. Just click the link, join the Discord. You could hop on the Discord to help with the curriculum. You can uh, join as a podcast fan. You just want to be a part of the family and soak up some of the good knowledge and energy that's on that Discord that we have. Uh, make sure while you're there, check out the book, uh, the bookshelves, uh, and and the Bit of Medicine Library for 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 conscious books, uplifting books, etc. Okay, so this paper tonight is a relatively short paper. Um. So I hope to make this a relatively short episode. The Philosophy of African Medical Practice by Richard C. On Wanibe from Cleveland State University. The philosophy of African medical practice is rooted in the African worldview. Those locating the cause and cure of sickness in traditional practice ask about the ultimate who rather than what. The answers given are in terms of the cosmological beliefs of the people. I shall deal with the philosophical issues in African medicine with particular reference to causes and cures of sickness in the traditional practice, the human person in this practice, the Christian, the colonial and modern impact on this view and a look towards the future. In doing this, in doing this, I shall show that African traditional medical practice has important contributions to make in technologically oriented medicine. So the first section we have is the cause and cure of sickness in traditional practice. In general observation about causes and cures of sickness in in the traditional practice reveals that the native African refers them, in most cases, ultimately to persons, human or spiritual, rather than to natural causes which are seen as resulting from the manipulations of men, spirits, gods, or God. By tradition, Africans are not materialists. They are uh, ethical religious, and this orientation is reflected in their medical practice. How do you guys feel about that statement right there? By, By tradition, Africans are not materialists. They are ethical religious, 
and thus orientation is reflected in their and this orientation is reflected in their medical practice nobody becomes sick without a sufficient reason which is interpreted ultimately in terms of human and supernatural agency since the native africans have a view of a moral universe in which humans spirits gods or god interact all sicknesses and epidemics are often regarded as an imputation of guilt by the individual family village or the people as a whole these maladies are regarded as signs either of the displeasure of the gods at the victim's sin or those of his family or community or the ill will of some um, malevolent uh, enemy in other words illness is considered a consequence of a branch of universal moral law by the victims hmm. in other words illness is considered a consequence of a breach of universal moral law by the victims the ideal world is immoral sorry the ideal world is moral Ugh, i'm messing up the ideal world is moral here we see the conflict of war of good and evil but it is expected that eventually good will triumph over evil. God or gods and forefathers are guardians of the social order and can exact redress by inflicting punishment on those who infringe the moral order of society. For example, among some native peoples, there are beliefs in a god or spirit of smallpox, ghostly possession, and magic worked by a malevolent enemy. Sickness may also be due to the spirit of a relative of the sick person who had, not be, who had not been put to rest by sacrifice. The cause of mental derangement is more than merely physical. It is ultimately connected with some disturbance in the spirit world. Hence, natural causes such as climactic conditions and viruses are considered in relation to the interplay of natural and supernatural forces. A question arises as to the rational justifiability of these beliefs. We shall deal with this later. So, you know, question to the, to the listener is, um, like viruses, like, like right now we're dealing with, you know, the fallout from the C-19 virus, right? In African tradition, as according to this paper, the C-19 virus, You'd have to consider it in relation to the interplay of natural and supernatural forces. How many folks out there believe that there's an interplay between natural and supernatural forces that, that are leading to this pandemic? Right? Uh, Revolutionary Matron is with us tonight saying greetings. Greetings to Revolutionary Matron. Thank you for being here. Revolutionary Matron says, I agree that Africans believe in balance and, you, and that we can manifest health and illness. I like that answer. I like that, I like that belief as well. Right? Let's, let's read it a little bit more and see what we come up with. Uh, the above view of causality and sickness and its cure is given expression in the mediation of the traditional medical profession, medicine men, uh, in Igbo culture. The practice of this profession is a mixture of the mystical and physical. It has strands of divination, quote-unquote magic, and the religious and herbal treatment. The training to become a medicine man is complex, depending on the kind of medical practice that the aspirant wants. One can train to be a diviner, a priest, to offer sacrifices, or a general practitioner. One can train to combine all three in his career. It is inaccurate to lump all medicine men together as witch doctors, for witchcraft is a particular kind of medical practice designed for evil purposes. You know, I was having a conversation with a, with a brother yesterday in Spain. Good brother, too. Um... He's, uh, he's associated with Abibi Toomey, Obadel Cambon, et al. And, you know, one of the things in our conversation, we talked about a lot of different things, but I remember one of the things he, he mentioned that stood out to me was like, what we call voodoo here in the West, right? Like, it's actually, you know, it has its, 
it starts in in ancient kemet and is actually a part of um military science and you know we we briefly talked about this whole concept about diviners and and uh the bushmen and medicine men and, and witch doctors and how you know there's levels to it and most people in the west which gives voodoo and stuff his bad name they practice the lower levels of this thing whereas when you go up higher and higher and higher levels this stuff is a part of your military and we actually see some of this at play in in uh, in Haiti just prior to 1804 and and you know involved in the events of 1804 and I, you know it's an interesting thing it's something I want to do a little deeper research into you know because when we talk about military science we today we we're, we're talking about battle tactics and weaponry and stuff like that but we don't include the diviners we don't include the healers and, and that might be a big omission on our part in fact it might be a fatal one right to continue the traditional medical profession involves teaching initiation and expenses in Igbo society entry into is not restricted as a as a as in a hereditary system <coughs> pardon me but it is open to anyone However, sons often follow in the footsteps of the Dibe, father or senior relatives. A sign of calling in this profession can be given through mental derangement in which the person called is troubled by Agua Inchi, the spirit of divining, and eventually receive inspiration. Psychological stability is attained in the process of this person's training. The initiated possess the power of mediating between the human and supernatural world of invoking spiritual power into material substances. Huh. As a mediator, the medicine man, by virtue of initiation, is regarded as half man and half spirit. Although spirits are more powerful than men, they can be used through appropriate quote unquote magical art to inflict injuries on men or procure a cure of sickness. When a person becomes sick, a medicine man is called. He makes a diagnosis with some incantations which give the air of mystical and cosmic connections in the ordered world of, of traditional thought. The sickness may easily be identified if it is not serious, or if very serious, its diagnosis may require divination which often connects it with the supernatural agencies. The medicine man, if he's not a diviner, asks the relatives of the sick person to consult a diviner to find the cause and decide what should be done to effect a cure. God, that is with a capital G, or gods, can be appropriated by sacrifice and consequently evil for the individual family or, or community could be averted. In cases where consultation with the spirit world is made by divination, details of medication and expiatory sacrifice for, uh, for effecting a cure are prescribed. Sacrifices are required in most cases because of the guilt involved on the part of the victim. Man is not merely physical. He has also a spiritual aspect, a soul, which makes him a moral being capable of sin and consequently, subject to penalties in the form of suffering and a particular sickness i i like that um description of man what are your feelings about that description of man that man is not merely physical he has also a spiritual aspect a soul which makes him a moral being capable of sin and consequently subject to penalties in the form of suffering and in particular sickness Hmm. There's a strong belief that the body and soul interact and influence each other. Now, here's a question for you guys. And, and I, I know someone who, in the end of their days, I guess they were faced with certain decisions. 
do you go to the obia man um because you're told by western science western medicine that there's nothing else that could be done for you but yet you go to the obia man and the obia man also can't uh can't reverse the situation how does that make you feel when you hear that which one do you have more faith in do you have more faith in the medical science or do you have more faith in the traditional african sciences all right you guys answer that question for me you could answer it live if you're here with me live or you could answer it um in the comment section to this episode's video to continue some philosophical problems arise in traditional medical theory and practice the first is the metaphysical problem of how spirit can affect matter or physical entities although this is an old problem of philosophy here in traditional african thought it takes on a practical dimension <clears throat> the interaction of matter and spirit cannot be ruled out a priori one who holds a dualistic view of matter and spirit can, without contradiction, hold a view of their interaction. Plato's conception of instrumental union of the body and soul or spirit and Aristotle's idea of substantial union of body and soul bear out the metaphysical possibility of spirit influencing or interacting with what is physical. The fact that the joy and sadness of the soul, which is the mind, affect the condition of our body for example ulcer is caused by worries positive thinking is a form of therapy points to a lack of metaphysical contradiction in the view of the spirit interacting with what is bodily although we may still be ignorant of how the influence or interaction intrinsically takes place mm. right I mean, a lot of science has shown that positive thinking, I see we got Jerry Wallace in the room saying hello all, hello to you, Jerry. Uh, thanks, for, thanks, thanks for tuning in. Uh, but but uh, like I was saying, we know, I mean, even science will tell you that more positive or less stressful environments can reverse or at least treat certain illnesses right here we're seeing it in our african spiritual system sorry not in our african uh medical and, and even spiritual system you know similar information so again i ask the question how do you guys feel about western medicine versus your tra t in today's world western medicine versus your traditional african medicine it is plausible to say that any dualistic view of the body and soul, matter and spirit, and the interaction subscribes to a form of magic. The term magic is advisedly used for lack of a better word. Mysterious is a bit vague. Here we can now discuss the problem of magic in traditional medical practice in view of the preceding background. The peculiar form of magic that I want to discuss involves what I would call, to coin a new phrase, extrasensory trajection est it is a strong belief among the ebos of nigeria that sickness can be inflicted on a victim by a medicine man from a distance by implanting something in the victim the ebos call it egba ogwa right remember we talked about egba egg we talked about the uh ah forget it the removal of the pathogenic object requires the intervention of another medicine man who makes an incision on the sick person to remove it. This Egba Ogu involves psychokinetic processes. Is this particular case of EST scientifically uh, verifiable? Is this belief justifiable into knowledge? Or should we adopt a facile attitude towards it and discuss it as primitive? See, that's kind of what I'm getting at with my questions. Here. Are we of the mindset still in the face of Western medicine? Are we of the minds, mindset still that 
traditional African medicine is primitive and therefore unusable, right? Even if it is primitive, does this fact show a pre-scientific relation of man with the mysteries of nature and beings above nature, such that the psychokinetic processes are presupposed? One may advance an analogy from the phenomenon of radiology. High and low radio frequencies were secrets of nature until discovered. One who has never known of radio waves and their inner workings will be mystified on the first hearing of the radio until we scientifically test Egba Ogu we should not discuss it as quote unquote mere magic without a genuine foundation it falls within the category of paranormal and the, and the philosophical problem is how to normalize that is the philosophical problem right you know in a, in the Marvel movie Thor what I can't remember which Thor movie it was, but the character of Thor makes a statement. A lot of people have glommed onto it lately, which is that um, magic is just a form of science that you that you can't understand as of yet. Magic is a science that you cannot understand quite yet. When I heard it. The first time it made me think of the continent that we have all these mysteries and, and sciences and mystery sciences and, and the like in the continent that folks just haven't been able to crack it it's science you just haven't been understood and I think the analogy used here with the radio waves is a good one radio waves do exist in nature right if you can if you can get a handle on it and be able to use it with accuracy you know that's magic too right in the chat room revolutionary matron says many belief systems talk about believing for your healing and in the christian system if you don't get healed it's the will of that deity right right yeah uh, not just Christians, but all those Abrahamic religions have that in common. If you die, you die. It's, you know, it's God's will. You, oh, they made you a slave? Oh, okay, God's will. You know. Uh, but definitely, science has proven itself. If, even if you just want to keep it scientific, science has shown itself that positive thinking is a therapy for many uh for many maladies right mind over you know matter uh similar to egba ogo is the widely known phenomenon of sympathetic magic in which images of victims are modeled and what is done to injure the image is transferred to the man himself there's also the belief that sickness can be transferred from one person to another or from a person to an animate or inanimate object. In providing cures for sickness, as I have already indicated, appeal is often made to God, who is supposed to inflict sickness and also provide a cure. One might argue that since God is the creator and supreme rule of the universe, it follows that he is the ultimate cause of whatever happens in his creation. And specifically here, sickness and its cure, and that, at least, uh, his permission is required where the agency of lesser beings is involved. While Western tradition grapples with this problem of divine causality, with respect to the problem of free will in the moral domain, African tradition maintains the view of divine ultimacy with regard to both physical and moral domains. Is God the cause of evil? To answer this question, one, must, one would have to distinguish physical evil, suffering, and moral evil, sin. Evil is more of a negation of good and points to lack of perfection. Evil presupposes an imperfect universe or world. The actuality of physical evil in the form of suffering is due to material causes permitted by God in the events in the universe and can be due to man's free intervention. 
Moral evil is due to the free will of the moral agent. But God, who is perfect, cannot be held responsible. The creation of free agents involves the possibility of the abuse of free will by sinning on the part of the free agent, such as man. Man as a free agent has moral responsibility. Well, you guys know I don't believe in half of what was just said. As St. Augustine has insightfully pointed out, God's, um, um, uh, God's omnipotence can be seen in, in his ability to draw good from evil, and as a case in point, sickness can be used to bring man to practical acceptance of moral order and to restore the balance and disorder. But one who is totally steeped in scientific empiricism has no thought of causality other than what is empiric empirically uh, verifiable. Right? You could call me guilty there. Right? The postulation of any metaphysical or spiritual causality sounds superstitious to him or her. Uh, demoniac and ghostly possession as cause of sickness is consequently discounted by him or her. However, this can be a serious cause of sickness, and exorcism as a cure of some kind of sickness is not an empty formalism to religious mentality. Africans are religious in their worldview and are attuned to the feasibility of divine or spirit intervention in medical practice. But care must be taken not to confuse the divine power of the Supreme God, which Africans acknowledge, and the power of a God of animistic origin, which is superstitious. Many medicine men of traditional practice often refer to the Supreme God as the source of their medical power. The Kung people of the Kalahari Desert, for example, maintain that the great God, Hishwe, who created himself in all things, is responsible for sickness and all death, but he gives men mystical power for curing sickness. Medicine men uh, receive curative power from him who appears to them in dreams and, hallucina and hallucinations. The great God is generous in freely putting the power of medicine men, who therefore ought to cure sickness freely. Cure is affected by the medicine men in a dance in which the sick person and others participate. Loma Marshall describes the ceremonial uh, curing dance as follows. Uh, at the dances, not only may the sick be cured, but pending evil and misfortune averted. The Kung believe that the great God may send at any time with, uh, that the great God may send uh, Guawa or the Guawas at any time with ill for someone and that these beings may be lurking, awaiting their chance to inflict it. The medicine men and the dancers combat them, drive them away, and protect the people. Usually, there are several medicine men performing at the same time. To cure, they go into trance, which varies in depth as the ceremony proceeds. When a man begins, he leaves the line of dancing men and, is, and still singing, leans over the person he is going to cure, going eventually to every person present, even the infants. He places one hand on the person's chest, one on his and her back, and flutters his hands. The Kung believed that in this way, he draws the sickness, real or potential, out of the person through his own arms into himself. Finally, the medicine man throws up his arms to cast the sickness out, hurling it into the, dar hurling it into the darkness back to Guawa, or the, Gua, or the Guawasi, who are there beyond the firelight, with a sharp, yelping cry of Kai, Kai, Kai. All right? I want to thank you guys who are here with me during this reading. I see a few people joined. Daily Affirmations by Pauline saying good evening. Tetums saying peace. I haven't seen Tetums about here in a while. Uh, revolutionary. Oh, sorry. Uh, Jerry Wallace says, everything in its place, a positivity mentality is definitely needed in order to be in a healthy mental 
and physical space, but sometimes you need a Z-Pack, uh, which makes uh, daily affirmations by Pauline chuckle. Yeah, and I agree with that. As much as, and you know, it, when I was in secondary school, I had to do a project on, but no, I didn't have to. I had to, I had to do a project and the project I chose was uh, one on bush medicine. And a lot of my family members in high school did the bush medicine project also because our grandmother was big into bush medicine. And so uh, the thing I always realize about that, about that study is that to be honest, once a sickness has kind of appeared within you, uh, it's going to take a hell of a lot for that bush medicine to really knock it out especially the more serious the illness. But with Western medicine that is actually based on, believe it or not, uh, herbal medication, right? Or more ancient, or more ancient medicine. Uh, you know, like Jerry Wallace says, that z pack will knock it right out, right? Sometimes you need the z pack to knock it out. So I stand that there is a balance I also stand that if you live a daily life taking in some of the more herbal, um, the more her herbal remedies on a regular basis, you, you, you will have the ability to withstand um, some of the major, you know, illnesses that come through, right? So I kind of lean, uh, in both ways, I, I, I believe that our, our, as, as black folks, as Africans, our diet should reflect an African diet, preferably a more ancient or traditional African diet, uh, not the diet that Africans have since they've come into contact with these other folks. Uh, and I think if you do that, you know, uh, I think you'll be fine. Like Dr. Sebi, may you rest in peace, always talked about the alkaline diet and the certain foods you should be eating. In fact, I was looking up one of those uh, foods recently because, and I know I'm kind of going off on a little bit of a tangent here, but I was reading this book recently, um, this Clyde Winters book. And when you read up about the proto-Saharan people, the first people, right? The first people who were Africans, uh, before they decided to, before they went on to build up Egypt and all these different um, um, empires, uh, one of the grains that they were heavy on uh, is common barley and fonio. And I always, that always stands out to me because that was a, that was a grain that Dr. Sebi pushed heavy as an African grain that we should be taking in. And, and, and I bring it up just because when you look at the Ma'a Federation of people, those proto-Saharan uh, Africans, right? Uh, those guys live longer than we do now. Those guys live longer than we do now. Like we just celebrated a young lady who's 107 years old who witnessed the Tulsa... Uh, what they call the Tulsa uh, race riot, but we know as the Tulsa massacre, Black Wall Street. She's 107 now, she's wheelchair bound, and a lot of people were giving her props for you know reaching that age and stuff like that, and I do too. By the way, today is the anniversary, I think it's the 100th anniversary of the Tulsa riots, you know? Uh, uh, but the point I'm trying to make is at one time, our people living to her age and beyond was not a surprise. And a lot of it had to do with what they ate and that African diet that they had. And I think that's the way to go for us in this day, right? To adopt more of an African diet and ward off, uh, you know, ward off a lot of these things that are taking us out at younger, and younger ages. Last thing I'll say about that, you know, when I was a kid, uh, to me, folks didn't really have and die from cancer till they like till they were like seventy. 
when I go by, you know, like 60 something, 70, all right, when I was a kid. So, it, so within my lifetime, it was really, it, it wasn't what I, what I see now in my 40s where folks are getting cancer and dying all the time. You know, that wasn't the case when I was coming up as a kid. And I have to believe it has something to do with the environment and the food, etc. All right. But anyway, I digress. Uh, where was I? So unfortunately, Loma Marshall does not give us evidence of curing by the above ceremonial dance. She only concludes that it purges the people's emotions for their support and solace and hopes. It cures, if cures really occur in this case, then there is more to it than superstition and magic. The content of ceremonial dance strongly shows the social and holistic aspects of traditional medical practice. In cases where spirits of deceased relatives trouble the living and cause illness, medicine men prescribe remedies often in the form of a proprietary sacrifice uh, in order to put them to rest so that they will no longer trouble the living, especially children. As a social environment is often pervaded with fear of witchcraft and sorcery, which causes sickness and death, most Africans resort to preventative medicine in the form of amulets and charms. A peculiar preventative procedure among the Igbos of Nigeria, for example, is Issa Aka, which is cleansing the hand. The medicine man of special caliber cleanses the hand with herbal concoctions that endow the hand, usually the right hand, with foretelling power, which is invoked on occasions. The man whose hand has been cleansed may invoke it in order to find out whether there's any danger, for example, of poison or ambush. The cleansed hand also is supposed to point to the discovery of hidden objects. Issaaka and other forms of charms and amulets have often been used in military situations. But unfortunately, many who dared to confront the enemy, the, sorry, the enemy artillery often were killed. You know, uh, a lot of times that is, it's stuff like that that turns people away from their traditional belief. It doesn't mean that your, that your traditional belief doesn't work. It just means that whatever these other forces, these other folks were bringing were just more powerful, right? Because you, you gotta think of it like, before these other forces came along with the Maxim gun and all that kind of stuff, you gotta understand that, you know, uh, the forces, the powers, the science that was used by Africans, right, uh, was sufficient for the maladies that Africans faced. But then here comes this foreign thing, this thing that the healers never faced before. Right? The instruments of healing never dealt with before. It doesn't mean that it doesn't work. It just means that, that it doesn't work when you introduce these others, these enemies of yours, right? But there are cases where charms or amulets seem to have worked. The use of charms and amulets as prophylaxis is clouded with uncertainty, deception, and superstition. There is a need of scientific investigation in this area and I, you see that sentence right there that's a sentence i love to hear right i love to hear that sentence I, i've talked about this on the show before that i've talked about this before on the show that we have all these educated black folks in academia in in research settings what have you and we have all this information that we get out of Africa, the Caribbean, about certain flowers, certain fruits and their seeds, uh, certain leaves, right? And instead of, and you know, this is one thing I wish I had done, but instead of, you know, our folks say, hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna research the graviola tree. 
All right, also known as soursop. I'm gonna research the soursop seed. All right, there's a there's a meme that goes around damn near every day talking about how the the, the seed of or the fruit of a soursop can is ten thousand more times. Well, where's the scientific work on our part to prove that? And 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 the thing that I said about on our part is very important. These other folks, they probably know if or if not, you know, there's a there's truth to this claim of the soursop seed and the soursop leaf, etc., and the things that they do. But they won't really push it to you because that doesn't make them money. But you would think by now, some African, some Caribbean scientist someone who's who's reached all the way to the phd level or what have you right and um, which by the way is more proof of the damage of of uh historically white colleges and universities and their education because no one should have to sh should have to tell you this like you should be going down these roads thinking about this from the beginning you should be thinking about, you know, I grew up eating sour soap ice cream and all this old shit. Let me go and study it. Folks claim that this bush is good for this thing and that thing. Let me go and really study it. Find what's the active compound or what have you, but we're not doing that. Instead, we're doing research. I see this every day at my work. We're doing research every day on stuff that's like, huh? like plaque formation by yeast and biofilms by and it's like come on there's stuff that we could really be looking into right if we study our history and we know that it, uh ancient africans lived off of this phonio and bali and whatever right and, and by the way they also ate cattle and stuff too right but what but it, 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 if you go back and you study it you know, what is it that had those folks living much longer than we live today? You know, and I have a big problem with that. Uh, Jerry Wallace said, well said. Daily Affirmative by Pauline said, most people never boil meat and eat the blood. Mama said, that is what is killing people so young. So Mama said, most people never boil meat and eat the blood. So is that to say that the blood is important to eat? I, I'm just, I, I just wanna be clear about that statement, right? Folks are eating meat, okay, but they don't boil the meat, so that's a problem. And they eat the blood. Oh, are you saying that it's eating the blood that's the problem? Uh, just let me know. Uh, Revolution Matron said, we cannot research our issues if we are subjected to their standards and systems. We chase dollars and look for ways to make more money. What will you have when, quote unquote, money is useless? Money cannot buy health. You know, that's um, Bob Marley's last words. And Bob Marley died of cancer that metastasized. His last words to his son Ziggy Mali was, money can't buy life. And that, that, those words have kind of haunted me since I learned about that when I was a kid. Money can't buy life, right? Uh, Daily affirm Affirmation by Pauline says, yes, the blood needs to be boiled out before eating. Interesting. Interesting, right? And again, all those things we could we could try to research and figure out. Uh, but instead, we're out here looking just goofy. I mean, it's crazy when I see black researchers, black PIs, and I look at what they're researching, and I'm like, but... <sighs> like, you could have done some fly stuff, you know, studying things going on in the continent of Africa. You could study stuff in the Caribbean, like Sarah C. Bush, and I mean, come on, there's all kinds of stuff you could have been studying. But anyway, I, I digress, let me get through this paper. However, 
The supernatural aspect of the traditional medical practice should not be emphasized to the exclusion or minimizing of the importance of its material aspect. Many more material procedures for curing sickness are seen in the use of bleed cupping for curing migraines, coughs, abscesses, and pleurisy. Then herbal ointment is applied with quote-unquote magical incantations. In some cases, the medicine man prescribes a fowl or an animal to which the sickness is transferred, and herbal drugs are given as a follow-up. Washing the warm water contained herbal mixture is often prescribed to provide cure. Among the Igbos, hot herbal ointments are rubbed on the eyelids across on either side of the head to cure headaches. Malaria, which is a common disease, is cured with steam from a herbal mixture and drink from a herbal mixture. Favorite treatment for fever is a steam bath, right? Emetics are also used for curing disease, as Dr. Afrikaans Horton observed among the natives of Bight of Benin, the fat of the boa constrictor has a powerful remedy for gout and rheumatism. Now, I've never heard about that. And I have a family member that suffers from gout. I've never heard about that. By its supposedly penetrative power of being rubbed, it relieves consumptive pains in the chest. A potential cure for alcoholism is the soaking of raw, fresh beef in the drink of the alcoholic. The mixture induces nausea and vomiting. These examples show that the, that the traditional medical practice is also concerned with physical causes and effects. The fund of knowledge in this area is scientific and needs further scientific research for the curative power of some African herbs can be fruitful in modern medical practice. And that's why I talk about the, the curriculum so much, right? That's why I talk about this African-centered ultimately pan-african-centered uh curriculum it's about how we educate our our kids and how we educate ourselves right uh when i talked about that project i did back in grade nine there was a book and i wish i had it with me now but there was a book on on like how to identify the bushes that you need like there's a bush uh, that I know well, home, called uh, Match Me If You Can. Right? Uh, the Match Me If You Can bush, farmers would take the leaves of that bush and stick it in their straw hat and put it over their head so that they don't get heat exhaustion and stroke. Right? Why, why pray tell, do you know, if, especially those of you from the Caribbean, do you know anyone who's looking at that? To understand, to, 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 to understand how that really works, you know? And that's just one example. Like, there's many in this book that I'm thinking about, right? We got to get back, not just get back to it, but we got to put some scientific uh, vigor behind studying these things as well, right? For all we know, aspirin is, is made from you know, uh, the match me if you can bush, for all we know, right? We're not doing the work, right? And, 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 and the reason is because we're not tapping into our history. So the next section is the human person in traditional practice. One very important aspect of the African medical practice is the attitude towards the sick as persons. Africans put a high premium on person, and the human recognition of the patient can be seen in the shower of sympathy and concern of relatives, friends, and others. The sick person is asked to fight hard against the illness. Much is done to make the patient comfortable. One does not generally become lonely in sickness. This social aspect is a laudable aspect of the African medical practice and should be preserved in view of the contemporary problem of depersonalization in modern medicine. You know, when I read that there, and that, that whole section is good to highlight. When I read that, it reminds me of how much we have been changed and altered 
by our proximity with these other folks, right? I remember when my grandmother, who I was just talking about, when she was ill in the hospital back home, I went to the hospital and there was like a new ward that had been built and she was on the new side. And you had to walk over something like a, like a, like a bridge almost to get to the new side. Anyway, in going to see her on that side, on that new side of the ward, uh, there was a guy, uh, in a hospital bed, weak, just laying literally like on the outside of the building, right? He was on a second floor. But the way it was, it was like an open area because you were getting to walk across this bridge to go to the other side. And he was on the corner, around the corner, out of sight, out of mind. And in a weak voice, he says to me, son, do you see um, m- m- my doctor around there? And I look back and there was no one. I'm talking about this area was quiet. You didn't see nobody. And I say, sir, I don't see anyone. And he just kind of like gave up and said, okay, thanks. And he just put his head back down. I'm sure he died over there. You know, that's because we're doing the shit that these other folks do. One of the coldest places you can go to in America is a hospital. And the second coldest, I would say, is a church. One of the coldest places in this place is a hospital. And that's not an African way. And we, again, we have to get back to it for, I mean, for the sake of our lives, literally. We need to get back to what, to what feeds us, what nourishes us, what improves us, right? And keeps us going. Uh, let me pause here for a quick station ID break. I'll be back on the other side. You are listening to the Bitter Medicine Podcast on KWAZ Radio. This is DA asking you to into the Harsh Reality Podcast, providing you with social commentary on the news affecting our community, only on KWAZ Radio. Peace family, this is Oni inviting you to listen to the pro-black perspective where black problems are addressed with black solutions. You are listening to the Bitter Medicine Podcast on KWAZ Radio. Yes, indeed. Make sure you guys check out those shows on KWAZ Radio. Make sure you check all of them out. I mean, real good stuff. Real good stuff. You listen to the pro-black perspective, you're gonna get re- I saw a uh, revolutionary matron the other morning, listening to the pro-black perspective and real good stuff, man. Uh, make sure you guys check out the other shows on the network. Uh, Jerry Wallace says, the foods that we are eating are full of parasites. The lime we use in our food back home would kill the parasite and boiling the meat would do the same. Bitters and bush meds are a must, absolutely. That's, that's, that sums it up right there. And I, and I guess, okay, so now that makes more sense with what Daily Affirmation by Pauline was saying, right? Put those two things together and that's absolutely correct, right? Yeah, we, we got to get back to how we, we ate. You go back and you look at ancient Africans, um, even when they ate cattle and stuff like that, meat, right? They burned that heavily. And you'll see that practice in some cultures in the caribbean still like you you look at uh jamaica for example they they will cook pork and they they will burn that like like charred almost right but by the time you eat that again it's pork filled with parasites like jerry wallace just talked about right by the time you get to that right and even before that the way they season it all the lime and all that kind of stuff to get that stuff up out of there you know, that's our, that's our ancient past. We got to get back to that. We got to get back to African health, you know, uh, to keep us going. If we don't have our health, we can't fight no, no war, right? To continue, uh, this section is called Modern Period. With the advent of colonialism and Christianity, African medical practice took on new dimensions. The colonial masters established general hospitals, and Christian missionaries built private ones. These hospitals fulfilled the the well-felt need of stemming the high incidence of various tropical diseases. Although the quality of these hospitals left much to be desired in comparison to those of the mother countries, 
these hospitals were a thin edge of the wedge of the modernization of African medical practice. And so that, that like summarizes what I was trying to get across in that story of the man right, around the corner of this hospital, right? That's not how we would really treat our sick. That's just not really, that's not really how people will treat their sick. From the negative point of view, attempts were made to remove superstitious practices from traditional medical practices. War was waged against magic, witchcraft, and sorcery to rid the population of pervasive fears. Now here's a question I have for you. When have these folks done anything with good intent towards our folks? When have these folks done anything with good intent towards our folks? So if I hear you right, right? Never, then why would we think a war was waged against magic, witchcraft, and sorcery to rid the population of pervasive fear? Why, why is it in the Haitian Revolution Bookman and then was like, hey, you have to give up these European gods and religion. And the French went on to be successful against the three major superpowers at the time. Only their foolishness and, and faith in humanity kind of kind of you know took back some of those gains, right? Or took back a lot of those gains actually, right? So when you hear that line right there, wage, war was waged against magic, that tells you what you need to be looking into. To continue, however, the problem was that the baby was often thrown away with the bath. There was no serious attempt to investigate the scientific merit of some of the traditional medical practices, especially diagnoses of diseases and the curative power of the, of the traditional medicine. Uh, believe me right now, they're studying this stuff. Right now they're using all kinds of imaging and stuff like that to try to see the soul and try to see how uh, good frequencies interact positively with parts of the body. They're doing that now. And in fact, they've probably been doing it a long time too. The prevalent attitude on the part of the foreigner was that, was that what was native was pagan and superstitious and therefore bad. And the corresponding civilizing mission attitude blandly regarded the important medical practice as the best for the African, right? Right here, we can probably get a good idea why we don't live as long as the original black man. It's probably why we don't live as long as the original black folks did that I talked about. Make sure you guys look up that Clyde Winters book. What's the name? What's the title of Clyde Winters book again? I had it earlier today reading it and I set it down somewhere. Oh, here it is. Uh, in, in, in my little man cave, it's so disorganized with books all over the place, but the name of the book is Before Egypt, the Ma'a Confederation, Africa's First Civilization. You guys should check out that book. It's one of those books that you will read numerous times because there's so much information in it and you want to understand it because you want to understand how we came to be, where we came from, right? Make sure you guys check that book out. Um, to continue, although this comment is in order, the positive contributions of missionary hospitals in particular cannot be overemphasized. The trust, the thrust of the Christian missionary effort was to bring Christ's healing power and care to Native Africans. In this respect, it succeeded, and the collaboration of Christian missionaries and others are still needed for developing good medical systems in Africa. Of course, you know, I don't believe none of that shit uh, in the last two or three sentences there, right? Nonsense, nonsense, right? KW Don Seven is with us. Uh, Daily Affirmation by Pauline said, years ago in the island, 
when consumption or TB was rampant, bush medicine cured a lot of people as opposed to when they went to the hospital. Some of the scariest or most astonishing wonders I have heard or witnessed were from Haitian Obia, absolutely. Uh, as I remember it, um, this singer, she had a recent resurgence because she's on social media now, clapping back at people. Um, Dion Warwick. From what I understand of Dion Warwick, um, Dion Warwick suffered from TB and couldn't get couldn't get it cured in the states. And she came down to our island, and that's where she got cured, right? That's where she got cured. Um, so, you know, uh, you, gotta, you, you, you have to, to take those things and remember it, right? You have to remember it. Uh, so this brings us to a section called Towards the Future. As Africans step into the highly sophisticated technology of today, philosophical problems of African medical practice become more complex. If medical technology is humanized, these problems become manageable. If not, high technology may destroy some of the deep-seated cultural values in African medical practice. As a first step in the direction of modernizing African medical practice, an evaluation of traditional medical practices should be made in terms of finding out what is of medical value. Absolutely. You got all these Africans out here becoming doctors and whatnot. What are you doing? At present, traditional African medical practice is surrounded with a cloud of superstition and uncertainty. Let me tell you something. Like Marcus Garvey said, if you're uncertain, if, if you're uncertain, uh, you've won, you, you've lost twice over, right? Get off of that uncertainty thing and start to find out how to drive this area forward, right? A lot of people thought uh, Sebi and uh, Dr. Laila Africa and those guys are quacks. Nah, there's a bunch of folks who can attest to uh, changing their dietary habits based on what these folks were teaching uh, another one is um queen of fool right there's folks out here who tell you their lives have been saved absolutely by queen of fool and no de no no deadly side effects you know or not that stuff i mean listen to the commercials for medications and that's all you have to know just listen to the commercial for your average medication. And that's all you have to know. V versus, listen to uh, someone tell you the list of side effects from drinking some bush tea or some herbal medicine. You might shit down the place, sure. But your heart ain't gonna stop from seracy. Right? Your liver ain't a wrinkle. Right? Again, you may tear up a bathroom, but you won't die from the shit, or, or you won't get something worse than the shit you're trying to treat. Right? And you gotta think about that stuff. There's a reason why we don't make it as long as we used to. There is much of high value in, in traditional practice. As Dr. T. Adios Lambo, a, Niger an, uh, a Nigerian psychiatrist, pointed out in comparing the techniques of traditional healers and Western techniques, quote, that about three years ago, we made an evaluation, a program of their work, and compared this with our own, and we discovered that actually they were scoring almost 60% success in their treatment of neurosis, and we were scoring 40%. In fact, less than 40 percent you see here's one of these guys telling you uh sorry here's a nigerian um psychiatrist telling you when they went back to you know tradition versus western 
they had better success. You, you, you gotta understand something, man. And I think this was, I'm pretty sure this was the basis of Laila Africa and, uh, and uh, Dr. Sebi and uh, Queen of Fuwa and them is that you are an African person. What you need is different from a European one. You are an African person with an African physiology and what you need is different than what these other folks need. I'll tell you, the Chinese, deal with the Chinese. Life with Nelly is with us saying good evening, good evening, Life with Nelly. Y'all check out Life with Nelly, Daily Affirmations by Pauline, uh, you know, and anyone else who has a, a YouTube channel, uh, Daily Affirmations by Pauline, you could follow her on social media and get a, uh, you know, as the name suggests, a Daily Affirmation. Uh, so you guys check her out. Uh, Coach Peter's here. Coach Pete said, good evening. Bush medicine is the best medicine. I still grow cerise, mangoes, ackee, bananas, sugarcane, mint, and other herbs. I know that bush medicine works and cures. Absolutely. Now, like Jerry said earlier, there are certain things you're going to need that, 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 uh, that Western concoction to just knock that shit right up out of it. Right? And, and, and that's the truth. You know? Uh, you know, so... You know, you, you, you have to keep that in mind as well. You, you can't just live in the past for sure. As much as I'm talking about traditional African medicine, this and the other, you cannot just live in the past. There's a reason why there is, you know, the, these, uh, these medical advancements and 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 therapeutics and whatnot. So, you know, look into the stuff for sure, but always remember that Bush medicine, as Coach Pete and I put it earlier, uh, is still probably your best route as an African person, right? Let's finish this paper now. African herbal doctors have much to offer if only trained African researchers and others can evaluate their work and see how to integrate the curative value of African herbs into contemporary medical practice. What have, I, what have I been saying? And again, this is why I talk about the curriculum, right? A part of, your, a part of an African or, or African-centered curriculum needs to talk about, you know, especially in the secondary school years, needs to talk about herbal medicine and understanding uh, what you have around you in nature, uh, being able to identify it, right? I know how to use it. It is gratifying to see great efforts now being made in this direction. I don't see the great efforts, but I'll go with what he's saying. It will take me a little far afield to discuss some of the philosophical issues raised by modern medical practice. Issues with regard to depersonalization, experimenting with human subjects, euthanasia, dying with dignity when life is merely sustained by machines and with it the fear of a living death and cloning can be subjects for further discussion. Hmm. I don't think you're paying attention to that. So let me read that section just once more. That's a heavy little section he's talking about here. It will take me a little far afield to discuss some of the philosophical issues raised by modern medical practice. Issues with regard to depersonalization. I gave you the example of the man around a corner in a hospital bed, right? Uh, experimenting with human subjects. Euthanasia, right? The dying with dignity when life is merely sustained by machines and with it the fear of a living death. And cloning can be subjects for further discussion. A pressing issue related to a person's right to medical care is in point here. It may be asked whether medical care is a human right. As I have indicated before, Africans have high regard for the human person and human life. This involves enhancing the quality of human life and medical care is an essential part of this. Hence, African governments should make a point of protecting this right by providing medical opportunities to their populations. Healthcare 
is a what's that word is a uh desideratum in africa today right a desideratum okay go on then with the words let me see something here uh Desideratum is something that is needed or wanted. Okay. Something that is needed or wanted. So healthcare is something that is needed or wanted in Africa today. Okay. The future will be bright when African governments emphasize healthcare with due balance rather than military establishment. Our discussion of the philosophy of African medical practice has revealed its various aspects and its prospects in contemporary medical practice. It has brought to light some of the problems facing a modern African doctor. The strongest argument for traditional medical practice from the philosophical point of view is that it is holistic. It incorporates the personal, social, physical, and spiritual aspects of man. This holistic approach to medical practice is what traditional African medical practice can offer to departmentalize and technology-oriented modern practice. While rejecting the superstitious elements of traditional practice, the modern African medical doctor has a gold mine of traditional sources to integrate into his practice. And that's the end of the paper. I'd like to point out that Western science is based off of uh, an African healer, right? So let's not pretend uh, that uh, that original African healer, right, is not where they get all their ideas about scientific inquiry and whatnot. As a matter of fact, a paper that I want to read soon, maybe it's the next paper I read, is on the method of African science. The, method, the methodology of African scientific inquiry is different from the European one. And I think it's important for us to understand it. As Africans, we have it in us uh, innately, actually. And so to talk about it might be a good thing so that we can fully and really reconnect uh, and really re reconnect to the source of all things for us right uh, coach pete says i agree i have to use western medicine too but only as needed in small doses absolutely absolutely there's times where you got to use that stuff right but i'm also telling you that little do you know sometimes some of the active ingredients in this stuff that we're using comes from some plant and the knowledge of it comes from some african be it an african in the caribbean an african on the continent an African in Central or South uh, America, or what have you, right? And we got to understand that. I want to thank everyone who was here tonight for this reading. I hope you guys got something out of it. Make sure if you're here to hit the like button. I don't care if you let us know that you were here or not, but just hit the like button. Those likes help to build the channel. Uh, please remember too that there's the Discord that I have a lot of you are on the discord who who have spoken up today in the chat room and I appreciate that for those of you who are not on the discord uh I would welcome you to come and join I mean like I said earlier I had a great conversation with an African in Spain yesterday and it was through the discord and lo and behold it was an African um, a fellow African telling me about how this show, this podcast comes up in certain discussions, right? That I didn't even know about, right? And so if others uh, are discussing us, you know, this podcast, and which includes you guys who are usually live with me and, and adding feedback, uh and opinions 
in the chat room, right? I include you when I say, you know, this show. Uh, if, if that's what's happening, then, you know, we number one, we must be doing something good. And number two, if you're not on the Discord, if you're not a regular on the podcast and hitting us with thumbs ups and etc., then you're missing out, clearly. Daily Affirmation by Pauline says, I enjoyed tonight's podcast. I enjoyed reading this paper. I always try to show folks that we have work to do. We have to get back to our original, uh, our original understanding in medicine and education and geography and bi- biology, botany, all of it. We have to get back to it. And no one's going to come and give it to you. And if they do, they're going to perverse it. Right? Uh, let me go through and thank everyone. Daily Affirmations by Pauline was here. Coach Pete was here. Life with Nelly was here. KW Dawn 7, as always, was here. Uh, Jerry Wallace was here. Thanks for coming through. Uh, Revolutionary Matron was here. Tedums was about to play somewhere here. I don't know where Tedums went. T- is Tedums still here? Uh, I'm trying to remember if Tedums. I know we was teasing Tedums a while ago, Tedums and Kruma. But is Tedums, are you the one who had the other Discord? Uh, if so, you did something with that Discord where it knocked off a bunch of us. Um, so if it's you, let me know if it's you. Uh, and if it is, hit me up on, on Discord in my DM and let me know what's going on with your Discord server as well. Anyway, y'all, thanks for coming through. Uh, I will be back again on Thursday. Uh, let's keep, let's keep Black Wall Street, Tulsa, Oklahoma in our minds. It was just a hundred years ago when they dropped the bomb on them and they got, uh, heated and envious and, and attacked our people. Uh, let's keep those folks in mind today and let's also strategize to never let it happen again. I'll be back on Thursday. You guys take care. Peace. Thanks for listening to the Bitter Medicine Podcast with your host, Koku. If you like what you just heard, we hope you pass along our web address, bittermedicineblogs.com, to your friends and colleagues and share our show to all your social media. Be sure to check out our archive section on our website for previous podcasts. This has been a KWAZ radio production. Join us next time for another session of the Beta Medicine Podcast. Follow us on Facebook at Beta Medicine Show, Twitter, Beta Meds, Tumblr, Beta Meds, Instagram, Beta Medicine.